Greetings, this is Jared Love, and this video is going to be an update for the transform negation video that I did a while back. There was some information in it that was a little old and incorrect, so I wanted to clarify that. But I'm going to still leave the old video up because there is good information in it, and I'm not going to explain in full detail the way I did in that previous video. But this node network is basically the kind of result of the little tutorial that I did in that previous video. So if you watched it and followed along, this is what you would have. The first thing to note is that I had mentioned connecting the XYZ because it's more stable and, and better. This isn't necessarily the case, it's not actually true, at least not anymore. When I was working at Imageworks, there was an issue where we had stuff connected this way by using just the parent attribute. But uh, there was some weird bug where stuff wasn't necessarily evaluating correctly. It didn't look like it was connected even though the parent attribute was. And we found if we connected the individual XYZs, then it made it work just fine. So there was some kind of Maya bug, not exactly sure what it was, but just kind of as a facility, we decided to do the XYZ connections and didn't have any problems. Now I've learned since then that bug has been fixed, at least I think so. So I've started just using the parent connection and if there's any kind of information that doesn't look like it's evaluating correctly, in those cases I would kind of start going in and connect up the individuals and see if that fixes the problem. So I would suggest going ahead and just using those parent translate and uh, scale the parent attributes instead of the XYZs. So since we're doing that, one thing we can do here is, you know, I've already done it on all of these. You can actually take one unit conversion node instead of three. And the unit conversion nodes input and output attributes are really interesting in that you can put pretty much anything into them. So you can do the individual and then it just takes that single value, multiplies it by whatever the unit conversion factor is, in this case, negative one, and then it will spit it out or you can do the parent and it essentially does the negative one multiplication for the three children attributes as well. So that's something that is actually really cool about the unit conversion nodes. Uh, so you can see here much cleaner uh, as far as less nodes and less connections and it still evaluates properly. So just to show, if I move this around, you see the control which is at the bottom is staying where it is and the parent nodes above it are the ones that are kind of freaking out with all the translation scale and, and rotations and stuff like that. Now, just to clarify where you would actually kind of use this stuff, I do have a video for the movable pivot that utilizes the negation stuff. So you can watch that video as an example of where you might actually use this. But to kind of just briefly overview of how this is working, Typically you would probably only do one, like most of the time I'm only negating out the translate, although there have been a couple of times where I did the translate and the rotate. But if you wanted to negate out more than one, then you need to split out the different attributes. And you can watch the previous video to kind of see why and understand what's going on with that. But if you are gonna be negating out more than one, you would start with your scales and then your rotates and then your translates. One thing to mention for the rotation negation is that you need to put in the opposite rotation order for that particular node than what the driver node is doing. So in this case, it's XYZ rotation and the rotation negation needs a ZYX because that's the opposite. And that just has to do with the rotate order and how it's negating it back out. So just FYI about that. Now this node could be on top and then the cube would be the one that's fully negated and stays where it is, which again, you can watch that other video to see that. Okay, so on to some new stuff. I've got this cube and a circle parented to it. So it's kind of a similar setup, but uh, so based on some comments from the previous video, somebody had mentioned using a decompose matrix and seeing how that would work instead. And it actually is pretty neat. So what you would do is you would connect in your inverse matrix from your parent node into whatever the driven node is. So if the circle was the parent, then this would obviously be the child. So whatever your driver node is, is going to be pumping in the inverse matrix into this decompose matrix. And then you can take the output translate, for example, and plug it in here. So I'll go, grab both of these and you'll see, see the cubes are, are working together. So this is a pretty cool uh, single node solution for doing that. 
if you wanted to connect the rotate, I'll go ahead and connect them all. So if you connect all your translate rotate scale, you will see that the rotates, translates, and the scales are being negated. However, you see this funky stuff going on with my, uh, this was this circle. So the, the bigger circle is the one that is using the decompose matrix. And now the reason this is so funky, let me kind of pull this over here, is because in order for this to actually work properly, there's this is a matrix we're dealing with. So there's a shear. So anytime you have rotation and scale together, it behaves weird with the two of them together. So all you need to do to fix this is connect in to the shear. So you see that fixed it. So now it's working properly as far as, you know, the negations working. Now, technically speaking, negating out everything I don't think is really going to be helpful. Typically, uh, like I said, I'll only do maybe the translates or the rotates or sometimes both. But if you negate out everything, then that node really just doesn't ever move anywhere and it's not necessarily helpful. So one of the things I noticed with this, unfortunately, I'm not sure if it's going to work super great because like say if I do the translate and then I'll break the connections on the scale and the rotate here. So now we would just have the circle being negated with the cube. So essentially these from here down is, is these are the same setup. Um, what I found that was interesting is if you're only using the translation, for example, and that's what you need to negate, then it's working fine. But if you also need to rotate your control and you want the control node itself to still rotate, but you, you want this translation negation, um, the decompose matrix method doesn't actually work properly. So you see how the bigger circle is, is moving around, but the smaller circle is staying where it is. It's orbiting inside you know, the, its pivot location. And this is kind of expanded on and, and more obvious when you move it now. So now you see that the negation isn't exactly negated anymore. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just something to be aware of. The decompose matrix method, while cool, being where you can negate out everything with just the one node, in practical application, I don't think it's necessarily going to be that useful. And it's also a bit of overkill math-wise because the decompose matrix node is taking in an, a matrix and it is decomposing every single one of these attributes anyway. So if all you're doing is negating out the translation, then just a multiply divide or even a unit conversion node, you could put a unit conversion node there. Actually, let's just, oops, I saved, duplicate. <laughs> Uh, so if we just do that and connect the translate and then like that, so let's get rid of that. So now just with a unit conversion node with negative one instead of a multiply divide node, you'll see that this is still negating properly. So, um, so yeah, it's just a single node like this unit conversion node is far less heavy computationally than a decompose matrix and even a multiply divide node because the multiply divide node has these operations in it so you can pick a different operation. So it has to check what it is. It has to check all of these values. Whereas the unit conversion node just has the one. It's like whatever the input is, multiply to negative one and you got your value. So that's what I would suggest actually, if you're gonna be using any negation is, is something simple like that, like the unit conversion node. You can't use the unit conversion node for the scaling because it's one over the value, one divided by the value from your driver. So that's the only one that you couldn't use a unit conversion node on. But anyway, I hope you found the video useful and helpful and I hope it cleared up some information from the previous one. Feel free to watch the old one if you would like to. And uh, thank you for taking the time to watch. Have a blessed day.